Hi, this is Dion again from FocusChemistry.com. In the previous session, we talked about the difference between carbonyl's reactions and the derivatives reactions. Even though both of them contain the same CO double bond, we saw previously that the carbonyl's prefer to undergo nucleophilic addition reactions, and the derivatives prefer to undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions. Now, in the syllabus, in A-level syllabus, even though the nucleophilic addition reactions are in the syllabus, the mechanism, the nucleophilic substitution mechanism is not in the syllabus, I'm going to show you to you today both mechanisms. I'm going to show you that both of them look almost the same, except one particular step that makes it different. All right? So let's revisit again the Carbonyl's chapter. The Carbonyl's chapter, we have learned previously that Carbonyl's reacts with nucleophiles like cyanide, and it forms, basically, of course, with some protons coming in to form a compound like this. Two things add together, it forms only one product. This is called a cyanohydrin. All right. Whereas the derivatives, for example, um, an acid, an acid reacts with an alcohol. This is the example I brought up the last session. Usually it's a reversible reaction with corn sulfuric acid. And basically what happens is that the OR group goes in and the OH group goes out, and it forms an ester, and water is a byproduct. And I mentioned in the last session that the alcohol is actually a nucleophile because of the lone pair, water is another nucleophile also because of two lone pairs. In fact, if you compare these two structures, what I didn't say last week is the last session was the R group is electron donating, so you'll find that this nucleophile is actually a stronger nucleophile than this water nucleophile. Okay. So let's take a look at how this mechanism is like. What happens in the first step? The cyanide, okay, the cyanide, the cyanide ion basically contains two lone pairs because if we draw the structure, it's a triply bonded structure with one lone pair each on each atom. Okay, this, this carbon is going to be the one that's contributing the electrons and not, and not nitrogen because carbon's lone pair, it's easier to donate. Nitrogen's lone pair is harder to donate. Reason is because nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. So nitrogen tends to hold on to the lone pair closer to itself. Carbon tends to be more generous in donating lone pairs. So the lone pair is going to be donated from the carbon. Now where is it going to go to? If you look at the structure of the carbon now, you find the electronegative element of oxygen. This oxygen will polarize the CO bond. So the carbon here is going to be electron deficient. The lone pair of the carbon on the cyanide be attracted towards the carbon which is electron deficient. Okay. And it's gonna form a tetrahedral structure. You notice one thing is that the lone pair when it comes in, right, the carbon would have five bonds. Carbon can't hold five bonds because carbon can't expand its octet is in period two. So it has to give out a pair of electrons from this CO double bond. In fact, in the double bond there's a sigma and a pi bond, the pi bond will be broken. The two electrons will come to this oxygen and therefore the spare electron comes to oxygen, and then the carbon will have three more bonds. The new bond is formed with a cyanide coming in. And in the last step, what happens is that this compound, which is an alkoxide, will get protonated maybe from water, or it can be coming from HCN, right? And then the H plus will come in. This is, this is like a base. It attracts the H plus. And the final product is formed. So basically, this is a two-step mechanism for the nucleophilic addition mechanism. Now, how is this reactions mechanism different from this reaction mechanism? Now, let's take a look at this side. Okay, I'm going to use OH as an example. Actually, the mechanism is not going to be so simple because it's, it's got a catalyst of acid or base, but I'm going to remove the acid or base catalysis and show you exactly what's happening, the real thing that's happening without the catalysis happening. So, the alcohol itself contains two lone pairs, and this is basically the acid. Now, what happens in the first step here is exactly the same as what happens in the first step here. The CO bond is polar because of the presence of the electronegative oxygen in this way. And that will drive the electron lone pair to come to attack the CO group. Okay? Now what's happening is this, I'm gonna make life, I'm gonna make things easier for you. 
I'm going to replace the alcohol molecule with another generic form. I'm going to show you in this way. This is a nucleophile with a lone pair because the actual reaction is more complicated. I'm just going to show simplistically as this is a nucleophile coming in. Now what's going to happen is that carbon will form a bond with a nucleophile, okay? And carbon will have five bonds. Five carbon, as we said just now, that carbon can't have five bonds because carbon can only hold eight electrons. And therefore, you must give up one pair of electrons from this CO bond. You must give back to CO again, the O oxygen atom. And therefore, the intermediate, I'm going to use nucleophile to replace alcohol. It will look something like that. You notice, right, the first step here and the first step here is exactly the same. What happens is the nucleophile comes in, the CO double bond, the pi bond will break, electrons come to the oxygen to form a negative charge, the nucleophile comes in as an addition step. So this first step is exactly the same as a nucleophilic addition mechanism. The first step is exactly the same. But the difference is this. The difference is that this particular structure is unusually stable. I mentioned the last time, the lone pairs tend to move, tend to delocalize across the COO group, and that will stabilize the acid group. So this compound is very stable, this compound is not so stable. And because this is stable, right, the destruction of this stable structure is very difficult. In terms of energy, it requires a lot of energy, and therefore, it's actually the slowest step of the mechanism, it's the rate determining step. The activation energy is high, this process is difficult because we're destroying a very stable structure to form something that's less stable. What happens in the next step is this, it will try to revert, revert back into its original structure again. Okay, sorry I wrote this wrongly, this should be an OH group. What happens is you revert back to its original structure again, what happens is the lone pair, one of the lone pairs of oxygen, will come back to form a double bond again. It wants to create a double bond again, so that there's resonance. In return, the carbon must give up one bonding pair of electrons, and you give up from here. The OH group will leave, and this bond will break, these two electrons will come out, and then it goes back to form its resonance stabilized structure again. Okay? Over here, the hydroxyl ion is given out. If the hydroxyl ion is this group, it will be given out, and this structure is formed. This step is going to be a very fast step, a quick step in the mechanism, because this structure with lone pair delocalizing is extremely stable, right? So in forming of the stable structure, the Gibbs free energy will be negative. It's a very fast structure, very fast reaction. And therefore, this step here is going to be very easy to form. Now, look at these two mechanisms, right? The same similarity is the first step, where the nucleophile comes in to create a tetrahedrally bonded compound as an intermediate. The difference is the second step. In this carboxylic acid reaction, the derivatives reaction, the second step basically recreates back the nucleophile, the, this stabilized structure again, because there is a reason to form back something that's stable. However, you notice in the second step here, it's just a protonation step, like an acid-based neutralization step. There is no reason why this compound should revert back to its original compound again, because this compound here, the carbonyl, is not that stable. Okay? And this is the reason why the carbonyls prefer to undergo addition reactions, and the derivatives prefer to undergo substitution reactions, because this structure here is unusually stable. It tends to form back its own stable structure again, and the double bond oxygen is retained in this particular reaction. All right. So that's all for me today. Thank you for watching. For more information, go to my website, www.focuschemistry.com. Uh, www Thank you for watching.